Okay, so in Illustrator, we have shown how layers work differently. And we have created um, a separate layer here. of just the head that's cut out with the X. Now, the next challenge is, I'm going to turn that one off, I want to create a new layer that takes these two shapes that make my solid water shape. And this time, instead of cutting one shape out of the other, we're going to merge them together into one clean shape. And then I should be able to turn it into outlines or strokes. So how do I do that? I select by holding down shift, both of those shapes. I go to edit and copy or command C. Then I'm going to turn them off and lock this first layer and turn the whole layer off. Then I'm going to create a new layer. This one's gonna be green and I'm going to say edit paste in place. And then if I open up that layer, you'll see that both of those two halves are there. All right. So just like you could do in vector, you could change it so that instead of being filled in what they call the background color in vector, what uh, Illustrator calls a fill, I could switch that to an outline what vector calls a border, what uh, Illustrator calls a stroke. And you can see this where in Photoshop you have the foreground and background colors. Here you have either a fill or a stroke. And the red line through means that it's empty. So I can swap those. So right now I have a, an outline, a border, a stroke, and then I can, just like in vector, adjust how big it is, right? But unlike in vector, I can't say whether it's on the inside or on the outside. That's actually a nice feature that you can do in Photoshop, but you can't do in Illustrator, right? Because a stroke in Illustrator will always go on both sides of your drawn path. But I have the same problem here, that I have that, that solid line in the middle, and I can't get rid of it. Watch what happens when I try to get rid of it. It just changes the stroke shape because a stroke has to be fully contained or a path has to be fully contained. Okay, just like in vector, you can use Command Z to go back however many steps you want. So the goal is now to combine these two shapes into one shape. So I'm going to use the Pathfinder again for that. I'm going to select both of them. Hold down shift, select both of them. And then I'm not going to exclude, because that doesn't make any sense. I am going to merge or unite. So that first option. And just like that, two overlapping shapes are turned into one shape. All perfectly smooth, all perfectly clear. Very, very helpful. Now, why is that helpful? because now I can convert it to an outline and give it more weight, right? I think I did eight points, so I can match that. And then I can turn on what I have underneath. And I can get closer to my design. The problem is strokes are not my favorite thing because you don't actually get to control their exact edge, right? So what I would like is for it to just be what's inside, not what's outside and inside. So these are all like the little problems with Illustrator. So one thing I can do, I have a stroke now, I can try to modify the stroke, I get options up here, but none of these are gonna be right. You know, I can go from thick to thin, but it's almost arbitrary, you know, where it decides to, to do the variations, and I don't get to control that. I can also try um, 
a whole lot of different, it depends on your, your version. And I know someone said they have a CS6 version of Illustrator, but all of the basic stuff will, will be there in CS6. The newer versions have, have lots and lots of, of different kind of brushes you can use. So if I do like paintbrush, for instance, I can pick one of these, right? And then you'll see it's kind of artsy, but I don't get to control it very much. So usually strokes are kept pretty basic. But let's say I put it at eight points. What I am able to do, oh, and strokes also, this is a good way of showing you some of the downfalls of them. Sometimes they'll give you little corners that you don't want, right? Like that. Just because that's where the stroke is deciding to stop, start and stop. So how can you really refine it? How do professionals overcome some of these obstacles of using strokes to get clean outlines? Well, you go up to object and you go to path and then you say outline stroke. So there are a ton of options, but one we'll use a lot is going to object path and say outline stroke. And what that does is it converts the stroke into a fill path. You know, it just draws the inside and the outside for you. Why is that good? Well, that means we can modify it, right? We can merge it all together. And then I can smooth it out. And this is my favorite thing about Illustrator is that instead of just using the pen tool, we can use this, my favorite tool in Illustrator, which is the pencil tool. And well, the pencil tool works a little bit differently within vector. Okay, sorry for that. Your computer didn't glitch. I just had to go get a power cord very quickly. Okay, so to smooth it out, all I need to do if I use the pencil tool is to draw through it. Start at one anchor and end through another anchor. And like magic scissors, it will cut out my shape and clean it up so I can get rid of that bump. I've got this other little tail where I put these two shapes together. And again, I can just, and I'm just doing this with a trackpad, so it's not the smoothest, but Illustrator is great at smoothing it out for you. Now that one's a little wonkier, so I can draw it again and try to be better. Whoops but I, I messed up a little bit, right? So there's another tool called the smooth tool, and it's underneath the pencil tool. And that will just even out your anchor points. So you just kind of rub it on there and it will smooth out your anchor points. So those are things Illustrator has that Vector doesn't. The main difference is when you use the pencil tool, if you double click on it, you get this option for how smooth or accurate you want it to be. So if I move it to all the way accurate and I draw a new shape that's really weird and I close it, I'll fill it in so you can see it clearly, right? It will be very accurate. And then if I want to use the magic scissors and recut it out, it looks a little bit like a flamingo. So let me add on a leg. Right? You see how that captures all of the little intricate cuts like an X-Acto knife. But if I double click and I set it to be smooth and you have options within here, usually this is the option I use. But then 
when I redraw it, no matter how shaky I am, it's going to smooth it out and make it look really clean. Sometimes that's what you want, sometimes it's not what you want. So it gives you those options. So those are some advantages that Illustrator has. And I do love this pencil tool just for doing kind of direct modifications. It's a later edition tool in Illustrator. But to me, it's so much more intuitive to use uh, to get the shapes you want than, than the pen tool, because the pen tool you're, you're having to modify anchor points so much. Whoops. So that happens when you don't, uh, it kind of went in on itself because I connected with the wrong anchor point. So you do have to be kind of precise with both vector and with Illustrator where you click. All right. So that gets me closer to what I wanted, right? Now I have a cutout. It's all black shapes that are cut out. And if I don't like the exact shape, I can just use what's called the large selection tool. And that gives me kind of transform options. And I can flatten it out a little bit and move it a little bit to get something that looks pretty good. Whether it matches my sketch or not. So that looks pretty good within Illustrator. So now I'm going to save it, but I am not going to save it as an SVG. This is the other advantage of Illustrator. I am able to save as an EPS format. And EPS is a format I want you to know. All of you in class, I want you to know it. Even though you can't save as an EPS out of the, uh, the vector program that's online. So... I, I want you to know it because it's best practice working between Photoshop and um, Illustrator to save your vectors as EPS files. So I'm going to save that to the desktop. And I'll call it my Illustrator version. Remember? All right. And then just use all the defaults. Now, the difference between an SVG and an EPS is this EPS, when I double click it, it can open just in preview, whereas an SVG cannot. An SVG could open on a web browser, but in preview, I can zoom in a lot and see that it's always perfectly clean. No pixels to be found. But the other great advantage of the EPS is it can be brought into Photoshop as a smart object, which is amazing. So if nothing else, if you're using the vector program a lot, you need a program like Illustrator to convert them to EPS to get the most versatile format for your, um, for your vector. Okay, let's go back to Illustrator. And let's, yeah, let's close it. I've saved an EPS version that I, that I like a lot. And now just to show you the difference, right? If we go to photo P, And I want to open from what I did last time. So let's see. From the desktop. <laughs> oh no, it's from Dropbox I was doing all this. That's right. Way too many files. 